like to tell you what this is all about, if you don't mind. It's a very exciting story, which concerns all of us. It takes place here in Manhattan, New York, USA. Now, you've all seen Manhattan in reality or in hundreds of films, and our story takes right in the middle of it. Here, to be exact, between 42nd Street and 48th Street, between the East River and First Avenue, you know, when I first started working on this project, the whole planning and building of the United Nations headquarters was a big engineering problem for me. Then I got to know this neighborhood a little better, these six blocks we had to clear, and I discovered they were full of life and quite different from the Manhattan we know from the movies. Can't you see? A fence? What for? To keep you fellas and girls out. To keep us out? We've been here for years. It's our playground. You hear that? He's going to take you our playground. Out. Out. Can't you hear that? I'm sorry, but in three weeks' time, this place is going to be as flat as a pancake. Uh, let's go to 46. Yeah, let's go to 46. Thank you. 
Second Avenue boys think you are. Huh? This is real serious. Flat as a pancake. If you kids knew that would happen, I told you about it and about the United Nations. Oh, let them keep their United Nations. We want our playground back. Yeah, what do we need a United Nations here for anyway? Keep people from fighting with each, with each other. You know, like the old Indian peace pipe. I get it. It's like trying to bury the hatchet. I, of course, I'm an old timer. I won't see the benefits of it, but you kids win, I hope. All right, but can't they go somewhere else? I think it's a great honor for us. Yeah, but what'd they pick on our block for? Uh, <laughs> well, it's a long story, I guess. They didn't just pick it out of a hat. I should say not. They had the whole world to choose from, and they took plenty of time deciding. Excuse me for barging in, but maybe I can help. You see, I was in San Francisco in 1945 when the charter was signed, and also six months later in London at Church House when the General Assembly met for the first time. When the delegates finally voted for the United States, then the real search began. Should the headquarters be built in some country place like Westchester County or uh, Philadelphia or San Francisco? Most people liked the idea of having United Nations around, but some people kicked. Meanwhile, the Secretariat moved first for a war plant out of Long Island, 20 miles from New York City, and rather crowded. The General Assembly also found a temporary meeting place in one of the uh, buildings left over from the New York World's Fair that was being used as a skating rink. But why do they have to pick on us? Yes, why do they have to take our playground? Yeah, yeah. why do they have to pick on us? Well, in December 1946, when the delegates couldn't seem to agree on whether to go to Boston or Philadelphia or San Francisco or to accept New York's permanent gift of Flushing Meadows... How do you know all this? Because I'm a simultaneous interpreter with the United Nations. A what? A simultaneous? Well, that explains everything. <laughs> <laughs> then Mr. Rockefeller helped out with these six blocks here where you had your playground. The deal was signed. And the six blocks were solidly turned over to the United Nations. <laughs> of the city of New York convey to the peoples of the world a small plot of land. However, on that small plot of land, decisions will be made which will shape the destiny of the world. The people of New York City more than seven and a half million inhabitants of all races, creeds, and national origins reflect in their daily lives the determination to practice tolerance and live together in peace with one another as good neighbors. Say, there are any good eating places around here? I'll be around for quite a while. I'm in on the billing of the United Nations. Hey, wait a minute. You're building the headquarters? Well, not all by myself. A couple of thousand other fellas in on this. I'm just one of the engineers. 
Maybe you could tell us all about it. Why, sure. Well, now, all I know is what they're putting up and why. Well, the General Assembly elected a committee to advise the Secretary General on the planning. They agreed to call in one of America's leading architects, Wallace K. Harrison, to take charge. And instead of conducting the usual international competition, the committee decided to set up an international board of famous architects and engineers to work out the grand plan as a team. The United Nations idea of international cooperation was put to a practical test. Well, here they were, from all parts of the world, and each with his own idea. And everybody was convinced that his idea was the best one. Well, we all wondered how they'd get along. That's simple. I break down all this here junk here and build a twice as high as the Empire State Building. That's silly. Imagine the delegates working downstairs in the basement and trying to talk to somebody all the way up on the 150th floor while they'd be using the elevator all day long. So? What would you do? Me? Well, I'll build a hotel, cafeteria, and a great big lake in the middle where the delegates can go rowing and fishing all day long. I'm, I'm going to build a house for every one of the 55 men. I don't care what they do. That's none of my business. But as long as they leave us our playground. Oh, you and your old playground. I think that's the stupidest thing I ever heard. I don't think it's stupid. I think you're stupid. Oh, yeah? <laughs> hey, break it up. Break it up. <laughs> now, now, let's see what really happens. It was quite a get-together. Men whose work I'd always admired all gathered in one room. Well, it's a great honor to have you here with us uh, in New York. Most of uh, us here haven't had the experiences that you've had during the war. We hope that out of your trials and tribulations, you may be able to find a method to help us produce something that will be a symbol for peace and security, and particularly of the United Nations in the future. I don't know anything else we ought to do. Let's go to work. So we went to work. But don't get the idea from what I told you yesterday that these famous architects sat right down and started dreaming of beautiful buildings. Why, before they could draw a line, they had to know what we call requirements. Uh, in other words, what sort of an organization were we building for? How big should headquarters be? What kind of buildings do they need? How many people would be working in them? And uh, what kind of work each person would be doing? That's what we call requirements. Now, look, I'll show you. Now, take this little office worker, for instance. He's an average size. Say he needs space for his desk. Space to move around in. To work in, breathe in. For all of this, he needs about 100 square feet. But there are going to be about 4,400 people in the staff of the Secretariat. That's 10 acres just for office space. It would cover four of the six blocks on the site. And what about corridors, washrooms, storerooms, dining rooms, heating, lighting, air conditioning, and office machinery? So the secretary just had to be stacked up in a high building, with maybe only a hundred persons on a floor. But that's only one part of the headquarters. We had to make room for the General Assembly. This meant providing space for a speaker and his audience. The speaker must be seen, and he must be heard. So we had to plan for an auditorium, seating a thousand delegates and observers. 
a thousand public spectators, and hundreds of newspaper men. In addition, soundproof booths for interpreters, television, radio, and motion pictures. Booths with a clear view of speaker and audience. And this takes up actual ground space where you can't stand an auditorium up on its end. Besides the General Assembly, there have to be other places for the representatives to gather, face to face, to discuss, debate, and agree. Three council chambers, four big conference rooms, and 18 other committee rooms for smaller committees. It seemed a good idea to put them all in a single building. The fourth and last part of the headquarters was something for the future. Someday, other international organizations would want to have headquarters on the same site. We would give them another tall office building without taking up too much ground. But this wasn't all we had to get into the site. There had to be sidewalks and streets parking space for thousands of cars, and just plain free space. So that's how this little fellow grew and grew to cover six blocks and rose 40 stories in the sky. Quite a guy, isn't he? When are we going to see him? When will this be ready? Hey, he's only told you about the requirements. Well, after the architects found out what was to go on in the headquarters, they had to decide what the buildings were to look like. And then they began to draw their plans. Isn't that right? That's right. And the radio and movie things you were telling us about, are they going to cover everything that goes on? Oh, I guess not. Only when something sensational happens. Then they have to cover every minute of it. Isn't it sensational enough when people sit down at a table to discuss things peacefully instead of throwing bombs at each other? Chacun ici aide à la clarification d'une idée. L'un aide à l'autre. Il n'y a pas de projet en compétition. Nous sommes à l'unisson. Nous sommes une équipe. L'équipe mondiale des Nations Unies. Établissant en ce moment les plans d'une architecture mondiale. Our first consideration is utility. And I think we must provide a working space that will be not only comfortable, but have the highest working efficiency, and also provide the workers with adequate uh, light and air. The way the architects and engineers arrived at their solutions was very informal. They brought along not only their national traditions and likes and dislikes, but also their personal temperaments and hobby horses. Some of them liked to sketch their ideas with charcoal on a wall and discuss them with their colleagues. Some of them preferred to work them out on the drawing board, alone, or in close contact with engineers and draftsmen. Ideas were discussed, changed, and many, many times discarded. Nobody knows today who had which idea. Sometimes somebody would do a sketch. Some others would discuss its possibilities. Other aspects of the idea would be developed, sketched, and discussed. The shape of the General Assembly Hall, for instance. Then the model builder would go to work and execute the idea in clay. More detailed plans would follow, hotly discussed, until everybody agreed, for the moment, of course. Then a set of preliminary blueprints emerged, and the models shifted around to their proper place. And while all these brilliant ideas were being thrown around, we others put in many tough hours drafting them, measuring, compiling, figuring.
Secretariat building to the south of the property, close to the access from 42nd and 43rd Street, with a Secretariat court here to the south, and with a General Assembly to the north. I will be with this plan all the way. There's no difference of opinion between us. There's only a difficulty of language. But I can say for my part that the cooperation has been perfectly wonderful. We've all felt our great responsibility, and I think we've tried to build not a symbol of peace, but a workshop for peace. At the same time, we had to clear the way. Six city blocks had to be torn down, mostly warehouses, factories, and a few apartment buildings, housing altogether 51 families. I took the kids around the site, Slowly, they began to understand what was going on and why. It was a little like saying goodbye forever to their old playgrounds. Hi. Hi. How many buildings did you wreck today? Ah, just one big water tower. Should have seen the splash. You ain't seen nothing yet. Well, we pull a big one down. Hey, time to go to work. Get out there and cut it up. While the pickaxes, blow torches, and pneumatic cameras worked their way through the six blocks, families and factories, slaughterhouses and heating plants, shopkeepers and butcher players moved voluntarily to other quarters provided by the United Nations. I can see why they have the United Nations, and I sure am proud to have them here in New York. But why didn't they ask us first? We liked it here where we used to play. And if they asked us first and we said no, they should have went somewhere else. You know, George, if the United Nations would have acted like this when they were founded, the war wouldn't be over yet. Do you think they all agreed right in the beginning when uh, you Americans should start the invasion or the French their resistance or we Russians our big offensive? Sure, we all wanted to be asked first and make our own decisions. But then we did get together. And that's what the whole United Nations is about. To get together and talk things over. Why don't we go there ourselves and find out how they do it? Yeah, why don't we? I know, let's go to Lake Success. <laughs>
dramatically enough, the urgency and the desperation of children's needs today. The ravaged areas of the world are infested with living sores. The physical sores that torch and twist and deform. And the mental sores of ruthless neglect, of emptiness and of hopelessness. Children in the parts of Warsaw must battle the dread tuberculosis. <laughs> Children's needs are desperate. The fate of these children hangs in large measure on what we, the people of the United Nations, can do now at once. The United Nations appeal for children is an appeal to you. <laughs> What is all this? Well, you see, I've made up my mind that I'm not too old after all, and maybe I'll live to see the United Nations work. And uh, I just wanted to do my part. With all this construction work going on, and all the foreigners coming in, and business picking up. You mean you actually speak Russian, and French, and all the other languages? Well, no, but they do, don't they? It's okay, we found out. We had a long talk with the boy about that. Oh, now what did you tell him? He told him that we finally decided to give up our playground after all. After all, he wouldn't want to hold us to work. The work? Yeah, the work. Mm -hmm. 